Welcome AP Calc AB students. We are going to take a look at a really tricky set of formulas that you're going to need to know in order to integrate some uh, special forms that result in some inverse trig. The good news is that there's not a large emphasis on these on your AP Calc AB exam, but I really want you to to kind of give some effort and see if you can commit these to memory so that you can use them when the time comes. So let's take a look and see what we've got. Now, the title of this section seems to be a bit, a bit misleading. Integration that involves inverse trig functions because it sounds like you're going to actually integrate something that has an inverse trig, like the integral of arc sine, the integral of arc tan. When in fact, what you're going to do is integrate something that results or produces the arc sine or arc tan. And so the good news is that there's only three of these that you've got to concern yourselves with. And those are the inverse trig functions that start with anything but the letter C. I'll talk about what happens if you have a form that's going to result in arc cosine or cotangent or cosecant. So in a nutshell, here's what you got going on, guys. If you see an expression that looks like this, 1 over the square root of 1 minus x squared with respect to x. Notice this dx can be at the end. When you integrate that, that produces the arc sine of x. Because, if you remember back, the derivative of arc sine of x from the earlier part of the course, first semester for us, was 1 over the square root of 1 minus x squared. So talking about knowing your der uh, derivatives backwards and forwards is going to be paramount again. Notice that the integration formula that it produces the arc tan is one that consists of 1 over 1 plus x squared. The formula that integrates to produce arc seek of absolute value of x because of the domain restriction variation is 1 over x times the square root x squared minus 1. Now, thank goodness this one is by far the least commonly one that you're going to encounter. Yay, can we get a, an amen on that one? Because that's not a fun one to do. Speaking of not fun, what about the u substitution versions? And that's where this gets a bit tricky. Because we can integrate far more things than just 1 minus x squared. We could integrate things that have like 4 minus x squared or 9 minus x squared albeit underneath that square root, that still produces the arc sine. Of course, u over a is present. Likewise, your arc tangent, a little bit trickier because of the presence of the a squared. And we can say the same thing is true about the arc secant as well. So the best way to do this is let's dive in. I'm going to teach these very formulaic driven. In a later video, I can break these down a little bit, maybe get into a little bit more theory. But for now, I really want to push the idea of memorization. All right. Sometimes it comes with the territory with mathematics. So here we go. Let's take a look. So example seven says find each of the following integrals. The first one, the integration of technically 1 over the square root 4 minus x squared with respect to x. First thing that we want to do is determine which form that this is going to produce. Is it an arc sine, an arc tan, an arc secant that you see here in the lower right corner? And the answer is, of course, an arc sine. So you have to know that. You have to have the understanding that the square root in the bottom takes out tangent, the arc tangent is a possibility, and the fact that the constant is first eliminates the arc secant as a possibility, therefore arc sine is all that's left. Now what you can do here is you could say that a squared is 4 and that u squared is x squared to get the ball rolling. At that point the principal square roots of both sides would be 2 and x. Now when I say principal square roots, we're only really concerned about the positive result of that square root process. So basically, if you are pretty sure that the derivative of u is equal to the derivative of x, and it certainly is, because the derivative of x is 1, and we swing the dx over, just like you were doing your u substitution before, that means that this is very interchangeable. This would be a du, 
just like we have here, and we've already identified what A and U are, the only thing left to do is write the answer to the problem, which is arc sine of U over A. Well, what's our U? X. What's our A? 2. Don't forget your plus C. And there you have it. Now, later on, I said we may be putting together another video. And one of the things that I could do in that video is I could take the derivative of this using the chain rule. And with a little simplifying to eliminate some complex fractions, I promise you that it will result in this 1 over square root of 4 minus x squared. Okay, let's take a look at part B. First things first, let's identify which form this is going to be. Because we don't have a square root in the bottom, it's a pretty ironclad guarantee that this is going to be the arctan form. So what we need to do is identify what a squared and u squared are. Well, a squared in this problem is the constant 2, which is a bit unfortunate. We'll find out why here in a second. And the u squared would be, whoops, 9x squared, which isn't so bad because of the perfect square. So if you have a value that's not a perfect square, just get over it. Take the square root of it. Use the radical notation. There's nothing else that we can do about it. Just be fortunate, that, you know, to take, take a little bit of solace in the fact that we were fortunate enough to, to have a nice 3 times x there for our u. Now, this is where we can get into big trouble. Remember the step over here, this du equal dx step? We still have to take the derivative of u. Anytime that you perform a u substitution, you have to take the derivative of that u. In this case, that derivative is 3 if we swing over the dx. And so what we've got to do with that 3 is remember to offset with it out in front of our integral. So we, in essence, have 1 third times the integral of du over our a squared plus u squared now to make this work. It's just that I don't feel the need to, to write that because we're ready to write our answer, which is right over here, which brings us to obstacle number two. The arctan form has a 1 over a in front of it, as does the arc secant. But notice that the arc sine does not. And so that's just one other little thing that you're going to have to worry about when it comes time to memorizing these forms. Both of those go together. Now we have our arctan, and then we just put our u on top, our a on the bottom, and then plus c. And there's a lot of things that one could do to this to kind of consolidate it. You could even get a common denominator, I suppose, if you really were desperate to do so. But this is going to suffice for the answer. OK, now with the magic of my smart board, I'm going to see if I can slide my formula box over because we're probably going to need a little space here to do our part C. Well, I wonder what inverse trig form we're going to have for part C. Hmm. Well, clearly we have the square root, so that's going to eliminate arctan. The fact that you have your u squared here in front, the variable front first, the constant second, and oh, it certainly helps to have that x in front, pretty much guarantees that this is a arc secant form. Now, for arc secant, nothing is different. You identify a, and that's going to be 9, and the u squared is 4x squared. You're going to see that a is 3, and you're going to see that u is 2 times x. Now, you still want to take the derivative of u, which is going to be 2 dx. But there is a last little curveball. And this curveball only happens when you're, whenever you're dealing with an arc secant form. We have not done a lot in terms of dealing with that x. And we're going to have to figure out how we're going to represent him in terms of u as well. So this u substitution that you made here in this second step is going to have to undergo another bit of manipulation. You're going to want to solve that for the x. 
You'll see why here in a moment. If we reassemble this integration, this dx that we have here is really du divided by 2, which I suppose if, if we felt the desire, we could have solved this for dx, kind of like what we did in some of our earlier videos. But by this time, it's likely that you are able to do that in your heads. So let's let this dx be replaced with du divided by 2. OK. Now this x is going to get replaced by u over 2. And then I suppose we could just call this u squared minus the a squared. And what's kind of cool about this is it's going to resemble our formula here in about two seconds as soon as we see that these twos cancel out. So the two that you had right here that maybe you were thinking is going to be a one half that you offset with in front turns out to not be the case at all because we had to use this special method. It's called change of variable, and I'm going to go into a lot more detail with that in example eight, but it had to be used for an arc secant problem. That's why they're a little trickier. So what is our final answer? Well, one over a is part of the arc secant answer, and the a is three, but we don't put the one over two with it as well. And then we write arc secant, and then square root, I'm sorry, square root, absolute value of our u, which would be the absolute value of 2x. Now, if you wanted to bring the 2 out in front, you could, but there's no need to. And then divide that by the a, and there you have your final answer. Needless to say, these take some practice. Right? Some of the most common mistakes are remembering or forgetting when we have 1 over a's. And secondly, the few times that we see the arc secant form, knowing how to deal with that constant. Now, we mentioned at the top of the video that you only need to be responsible for three of these, the, the arc sine, arc tan, and arc secant. The reason is because the arc cosine forms would just come about if there was a negative sign in front. Well, I guess that's OK if you have the integration of negative dx over square root of 1 minus x squared. You could call that arc cosine. But you know what I would just as soon call it? Negative arc sine. You could just float the negative to the other side. So there's no need for you to, to memorize a, another set of these. These are going to be the only ones that, that you need to focus on. And the further good news, as far as calc and integration techniques and derivative techniques are concerned, for a, b, you are done. That is the last set of formulas that you need to memorize in terms of performing well with integration problems on the AP exam. So that's good, and you've got a while to get them locked in. Practice these. You'll get better, I promise. We'll see you at the next, uh, the next video where we're going to talk about change of variable. Take care.